How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the Trim Sure Repair channel. All 236,000 of you beautiful souls, thanks for joining me again. As always, I'm Dan. And in today's episode, I've got something special for you. Well, I always say special, don't I? One day I'm gonna say normal and boring, but today it's special. So what we've had sent in is something traditional. We've got these Gaelic of Edinburgh, traditional Scottish ghillie brogues, and we're doing a bit of a conversion on them. So keep watching, see what it's all about. So once again guys welcome back hope you're all doing well so let's talk about these uh ghillie brogues okay so these are traditional scottish shoes that were normally worn in band you know drums the bagpipes and such but what we're doing is a bit of conversion they are leather soles but it's not the best quality leather soles to be honest and they're full of all these metal nails and the customer is saying that they're very slippy in the wet i hear it rains a lot up in scotland so what we're doing is we're stripping it all off and replacing it with a day night sole which is going to give the customer loads more grip and it's going to last even longer anyway so it should be fun i'm going to try and get in the scottish theme i think all i need now is a set of bagpipes And I've also got a bonus job for you, or rather half a job. We had a customer also called Dan visiting from the States on his travels, visiting family. And he's brought in another pair of these ever so popular Salvador Ferragamos. And I'm halfway through the job and there's a reason for that. But I'm going to show you the end half of it. We're going to do a fancy design on it. Should be a bit of fun. I almost completely forgot to say, you have to stick around to the end, guys, because to celebrate these Scottish shoes, we're doing some traditional Trinkshu Repair Cobbler Highland games with some guests of mine. So you've got to stick around for that. Okay, so we'll start dismantling our ghillie shoe. Now, normally we take the laces out, we've got these long things that wrap around the calves, but they've got tassels on the end, can't take them out. So I'm just gonna tuck them away neatly. And then get to work. See all those pins in there that have been giving the customer trouble slipping around. And we're left with a plastic heel block. So we're just gonna get rid of that and replace it for a nice new leather one. Just pull them old nails out like pulling teeth. Okay, so this is the main sole off, and we're left with a thin midsole. So we're gonna whip that off on the sanding band. We're gonna replace the midsole, I think, anyway, to keep the shoe in keeping once we put the day night sole on. And then we can remove the stitches. So we always got to pick out the old stitches. If you guys are new to the channel, I'll tell you why. There he is. When we sew the new sole on, we're putting new stitches in with new thread, obviously. And if there's old thread still in the way, it just gets chewed up and it looks a real mess. And also we want to free up the holes where the stitches have gone through so that we can stitch through those same existing holes so that we keep the welt intact. And it doesn't look like Swiss cheese when we're finished with it. Okay, where are we up to? So we've got both our shoes stripped down. We've removed all of the stitches from the top of the welt. Uh, we need to get a bit of cork filler in there, but let me show you the components. So 
we're putting in a leather midsole, which is just gonna, normally would increase the comfort of the shoe, but we're just replacing what was already there. But we are upgrading to day night rubber soles, which I think is gonna go really well. Okay, so now we've got all our components and our shoes prepped, ready for gluing, and we need to get the contact adhesive on. If you're new to the channel, the way it works is we glue it on, let it dry, and then heat it back up to activate it. So, you know what that means. Cue the let's get sticky music. Okay, so there we go. So like I said, we'll give it five and then heat everything up and stick it together. You know, I'm just seeing on the camera, I think some of you are probably going to notice and ask me, what's wrong with my arm? It's all right, it's not a disease or anything, it's just friction burns from the gym. Me and my pal Chris were doing uh, Atlas Stones. Now we're going to whack this day-night sole on, and when we're putting day-night onto shoes that don't normally have a day-night sole on, we have to be quite particular that we make sure the studs line up in the right place, or a good enough place. Gotta angle it just right so that the sole obviously fits as well. Here we go. And give him a pressy wessy. guys so as i'm just moving on to putting the heel blocks together i'm going to show you a little trick so these new heel blocks are way too thick for what we need and because it's stacked leather what we can do is we can just grab our pincers and we can peel off one layer it's fighting back it's putting up a struggle but there we go so we thin down our heel block and we can use this for something else later
Okay, so to finish up, something that's critically important because we've put new leather heel blocks on, we need to nail them on securely from the inside out through the sole, which some people forget to do. And then we get shoes coming in with the heels falling off and they wonder why. Of course, everybody asks about nails when we're nailing them in heel sections. They sit dead flat and we're hammering them dead flat so you don't feel them when you're wearing them whatsoever. Right guys, as I said, we're gonna take a quick look at these Ferragamos that I've got. So, we're halfway through the job, and as I said, there was a delay on this, and the reason being is the customer really wanted JR Leather, and some of you will have known the saga of JR Leather. The company uh, briefly went out of business and then went re-brought up by somebody else, so they're back in business. However, it takes a year or so to make the leather soles, so uh, there's been a delay on supply. I've just run out of my last bunch of JR Leather, so, uh, Luckily, kindly, our good friend Steve at Beedo's Leverworks was kind enough to send me over one of his last pairs. He's probably got hundreds left, actually. He's the godfather of leather soles. But we've got these here. We had to wait for them to come in the post over from America. But we've got them now. So what we're going to do is get this on. We're doing a blind stitch, which I'm going to show you, and then do a bit of a design on it. So it should be cool. Okay, so we've heated the glue up as usual on our leather sole. But little trick soaked just the very top side of the leather. That makes it a little easier to cut when we do our blind stitch. And as always, got to get our gold leaf logo lined up just center. Some of the JR soles come with a brown logo actually, which I think I prefer. It looks quite sleek. Okay, so let's go ahead and get our blind stitch in. Now, the purpose of a blind stitch or an invisible stitch is we're cutting a little flap up in the lever. So it folds up, as you'll see in a minute. Then we do the stitches, stitch the sole on, stitches go through the sole, and then the flap goes back down, covers up the stitches, and it looks like a blind stitch. And this is a little tricky for me to film, so I hope you guys can see all right. Uh, it's essentially like peeling a really tricky, tough potato. And I'm not going to lie, it is definitely one of the more uh, skill-required challenges in the cobbler trade. It takes a lot of practice, a lot of mistakes, but, uh, you know, looks nice when it's done. There's about a million scooters going past outside, don't know if you can hear them. Just stop a third of the way around and you can see the beginnings of our flap. So we'll just finish the whole thing and then we can stitch it on. Okay, that'll just about do it. Let's go and stitch it on. Okay, so there you can see, so I've sold stitched on. Now I'm gonna get some glue inside this crease and fold the flap back down. Yeah, I oh know I need to clean my brush up. Okay, so it's going to take a bit of tidying up with some polish, but other than that, who'd have known? 
Okay, so we're gonna get a pattern on our sole. So we're gonna be using dyes and some stencils. I'm gonna use a pattern you'll have seen before that we did on the last Ferragamo's because it looks really cool and I wanna kind of keep a running theme. go so it needs a bit of a polish up some brass detailing but that's gonna look pretty cool and we've got the heel on okay so that's the finished article you see I've got the heels on there the nice Vibram explosion it just looks pretty tasty I reckon you see my assistant Annabelle in the background there she's probably gonna run away now say hello Annabelle Hi. my glamorous assistant she's gone now she got embarrassed back in the cellar where you belong so anyway, before we get these back to the customer and more importantly, do the Highland Games, we've now got two pairs of shoes that need a good polish up. So we're gonna give them some TLC. Okay, so time for everyone's favorite part, TLC. I've got Chief Ron here to oversee the cleaning. It's gonna be pretty straightforward because they're both black. And we're gonna do the same thing on both. We're gonna clean them, nourish them with cream, and then put a wax finish on top. So as always, is using the uh, Saphir products. We're gonna start off with a gentle cleanser just to get off the old polish and any muck and debris that might be on there. Now the great thing about this gentle cleanser is it's gentle enough. You can literally put it on anything, but it's fantastic. You can see it's pulling off all the old polish ready for us to put new products on. And before I jump onto the Ferragamos, I did uh, just forget there are some scratches. I don't know if you can see that. So what we're gonna do is gently sand them out so it's nice and smooth before we apply our black cream. So we've got super fine sandpaper. This is 800 grit. And we'll just very delicately, essentially buff because it's such fine sandpaper, buff out these scratches. Okay, so there we go. So as you can see, we've obviously got a faded patch there, but it's dead smooth. So we just need to dye it again with new pigment. And um, we're gonna do that with the Saphir 1925 cream because it's got enough high concentration of pigment in there that it will dye our area just fine. And this really is the best stuff to use as a conditioning cream for softening and keeping supple uppers. It's made with seven different waxes, including sheer butter. So it really is top quality stuff. And I like to just get right in with my fingers to apply it. There we go. So obviously we're gonna do the whole shoe, get some of that nice dark pigment back in there, let it soak in, and give our uppers some much needed TLC. in the quality of this cream. It sort of glides across the uppers rather than some other shoe creams can be quite thick and almost pasty. This is more like liquid polish. Hello. Hello. How can I help? I wonder if you've got six keys for me. Six? Six, yes. Which thing, Annabelle, can we manage six? <laughs> right, so that's been a couple of minutes. The cream's dry. We'll let it dry a little bit before we buff it off just so it has time to soak in, and I like to take off the excess with a brush. Okay, so that's it, finished, buffed off. You can probably see I haven't buffed this one off. This one's already come up to a nice shine, and this one on the Ferragamo. But we want it a bit shinier, so we're gonna finish off with a wax topping. Hiya. Hi there. How can I help? 
So what we've got here is the Saphir Medaldor polish, which is essentially the same as the Pat Deluxe. It's just sort of the posher version. It's got a higher concentration of ingredients in it. And just gonna get this on with uh, a brand new cloth, I think. So once we're done with this, who's excited for the Highland Games? I can't wait and I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Ron's coming. Ron's part of the Highland Games. Okay, so there we are. That'll just about do it. And uh, yeah, I got a pretty spanking shine there. But if you really want the top dollar shine, this is the stuff you want. The Saphir Medaldor Mirror Gloss, which loads of you guys have seen already, but this is the very best stuff for getting a mirror shine. It actually makes it very easy to get a shine. Um, a bit more pricey, but like I said, it's the best stuff. And uh, of course, if you want any of this stuff, the waxes, the creams, you can find it all on our website, trimsurepairs.com because we are an official Saphir stockist. So there we go, both jobs done. Okay, so job done on both of our shoes. So our Gilly Brogues had the leather soles first. We've converted them to day night soles, put a leather midsole in there, stitched it on, and of course, given the uppers some TLC. And then of course, our Ferragamos have had the top treatment with JR leather. We've done the cool design on it, blind stitch, the Vibram explosion heels, and of course, spruced up the uppers. And I think they look pretty cool. So that's it for the shoes, but it's not the end of the video. You know what we're doing, we're heading up the road for Highland Games. All right, so here we are everyone, we're here in the Tring Highlands for Highland Games, and this is the team. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got Steve, Red Wing guy, Terry, the window cleaner, Hiya. and Chris from Zero Office Furniture. Hello, Usually, mate. all these guys have been on the channel already. So what we're doing, Red Wing guy Steve is actually a cobbler as well. So we're doing teams. We're doing cobblers versus tradies, AKA losers. I'm not having that. I don't think that's gonna happen, is no. it, Dan? No. Come on, mate. Chris, would you mind signaling the start of the games? Yeah, sure thing, Dan. Thank you. Ooh. <laughs> Okay guys, so we have got three events lined up for you. The first is the Magic Golden Last Toss. So essentially the, the competition is to find out who is the best tosser. Legend has it, whoever can toss the Golden Last the furthest is the cobbler with the purest heart. So Terry's gonna start. We're starting from the pink disc, the log and the cow pat. And Steve's gonna mark where he goes. Let's go, Terry. Not right, for the white markers. Dan's up. <laughs> Ready for this? Yeah. <sighs> he knows what he's doing. <laughs> Stop sharing ideas, that's cheating. <laughs> right, right, Chris is up from zero office furniture. Oh, I think it's like that. He's had a lot of practice moving chairs. <laughs> Uh, no, unfortunately, 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 that was that was a foul because Chris is Chris is wearing a left-handed kilt. All right, Steve's up. Steve has actually been a cobbler even longer than me, so I'm expecting big things. <laughs> Let's go, Red Wing guy. Whoa! I'm having another go. It's my video. <laughs> you won't beat me. No. <laughs> How rubbish was that, lads? Wasn't great, was it? It wasn't good, especially for a second attempt. Is actually, is that is that even worse than before? <laughs> you know the good news or the bad news? Good news. The good news is I beat you by a foot. <laughs> bad news is it landed in cow pack. <laughs> uh, Chris is banned from being too strong. Too good. All right, guys. So for the next event, well, the guys are talking amongst themselves. You've heard of the egg and spoon race? We don't have an egg. We do have a Ron. We're doing the Ron and Spoon race. All right, Terry's up first. What's your catchphrase as a window cleaner? 
I'm going to clean up this town. When he's and done. I would walk 500 <laughs> miles and I... Stop it. <laughs> All right, Terry's up. Are you ready for the Ron and Spoon race? No. Three, two, one, go. Three, two, one, go! Come on, run Oh no! <laughs> Got way too cocky. Luckily, I get two goes. <laughs> Three, two, one, go! Oh, that's pretty hard. Chris is up as a office chairperson. What's your catchphrase? You can spin on it. Oh, filth. <laughs> Three, two, one, run! No, oh, he can't keep winning everything. <laughs> Come on, Red Wing guy, bring it home. Three, two, one, go! Come on, Steve, come on, Steve, come on, Steve. Yes. Two. Oh, yes. yes! Oh, yes! He's not going to tell you his secret. Oh, okay, so as it stands, it's Cobblers 1, Tradies 1. So now we're on to the decider. All right, so the decider is the how long can you hold two tins of shoe glue for? All right, Terry's up first. He looks smashing, by the way. Thank you. Three, two, one. Hold them glue tins. Just advertise in there. Come on, Terry, don't give in. Don't give in. Don't be a wuss. This time's going slow, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. He can hold it all day. <laughs> <sighs> There we go. Time. Oh, what was that? That's really good. <laughs> 114 for Terry. Lift. Make sure my arms stay straight. Oh, none of this cheating. How's that feeling, mate? It's lovely. I could stay here all day. I could keep this up all day. I was going to ruin my game. There's a fly on me. There's a fly on my hand. <laughs> <laughs> was I cheating there? Was I too low? <laughs> oh, no. An invader. I'm not going to ask why you're wearing kilts. Isn't it obvious? <laughs> the, cha the challenge just started. I'm not going to let office furniture win. <laughs> Are you sure about that? Oh, shaking a bit. What's the time? One minute one. Is that it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shoe power! <laughs> Help me, Jesus. <laughs> Help me, Tom Cruise. He's gonna never give up, never surrender. Oh, is he? Is he going? <laughs> he's got. That's gone. <laughs> that's gone. That gone? Yeah, he's uh, definitely uh, gone there. Forty-seven. <laughs> okay, guys. So just a bit of trivia. We're not in the Cobbler Highlands. We're at uh, Tring Park, which is a great big meadow nature reserve area, and it's gorgeous. You can see over there, big old woods. Those are trails. You have to walk through and like some little monuments and stuff. If you're here in Tring, check it out. It's awesome. Chris's excuse for not wanting to do this challenge is... I trained Jesse yesterday. Oh my, what is it? Jesse, absolute Jesse. All right, Chris is up. The time to beat, the astonishing time to beat, is 1.47. Three, Let's have it. two, one, go. Oh, he's going already. He's failing already. <laughs> Terrible. They are. My left one's shaking. No, shut up. I'm a bit worried about it. You made these heavier? Well, since I lifted them. I just put some extra glue in them. I had it in my sock. <laughs> Two minutes. He looks good. Stand it all Come day. Up to a minute. That's not on. Is it? <laughs> That's just fatigue. He me. knows. He knows he's gonna lose. Right, I've got to go into a trance now. Okay. Absolutely. You thinking of me naked? No. <laughs> <laughs> Give up. Give in. No. Give in. Two minutes, one second, which means it's up to Steve. Are we ready? Yeah. Go. Red wing guy. Red wing guy. Red wing guy. This, I can feel this this shoulder here. You can't, you can't, you got this. I, I got felt it early on and it was just... You look like you're wearing pyjamas. <laughs> <laughs> I planned it this way. You know, you got 50 seconds. Oh, if I do a minute, I'm all right. You're going to beat me. Oh, that'll do. Oh, oh. Round of applause. Oh, I'll be all right in a minute. Okay, so at the minute, the tradies oh. are in the lead, but unfortunately, it's unacceptable. So we're going to have to go to the decider decider, which is the caber toss. Okay. We're doing the caber toss. Okay, we're th this is the caber. Doing the caber toss. Let's go, Terry. It's a big log. 
mighty throw. Yeah, I think so. Oh. He's really going for it. What can I say? <laughs> His pants falling down. Oh, it's, oh, he's done it! Fuck me, I certainly did it wrong. Was well, that the decider? Ah, that means Cobbler's won! Yes! Mm. Right, give us the good news, Chris. Right, so you guys have won, unofficially. Oh, uh, unofficially. <laughs> Fair away, man. And your prize for winning the annual Tring Highland Games is Ron. Ron! Ron. Well Ron's done, guys. Home. Well okay. done. So that's it for Highland Games, guys. As you can see, the Cobblers won with Steve's yeah. excellent caber toss. So from all of us guys here, let's, let's get, get sticky. Okay, so back in the shop, guys. As you can tell, it's the next morning, but hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed Highland Games. I know it was a little bit silly. I hope you enjoyed the shoe repairs. As always, if you made it all the way to the end, hit like, it really helps me with the channel. And I just wanted to answer something, a random comment. I've had lots of these comments before I'd address it. I recently thought about changing the name of the channel from Tring Shoe Repairs to Dan the Cobbler. And, and I did for, for a hot minute. And a few of you asked me why I changed it back. And the reason was just, it just didn't feel right. I prefer Tring Shoe Repairs. I didn't want it to just sound like it was just about me. The channel is Tring Shoe Repairs and the shoes and such. So I left it as that. Even though we're down the cobbler, what I wanted to do was open the avenue for more vlog type stuff. But I think we can probably chuck some stuff in there as it is and get away with it. So that's it. I'm going to love you and leave you. I'm actually off on holiday now going away to Turkey for 10 days. We're a much needed rest and break. Uh, ready to come and recharge for the busy season, which is winter. So as always, make sure to subscribe. Hit the notifications bell if you haven't already because you guys keep saying you always miss my stuff. Hit the notifications bell and then you're kept in the loop when I do upload something new. If you want any shoe repairs doing, get in touch with us via the website tringshoerepairs.com. Fill out the contact form and we can talk to you about your shoe repair. That's also where you'll find all the Saphir products. We are an exclusive retailer for Saphir. So all the creams, polishes, brushes you might want, check out the website. I'm always adding new stuff every week. But that's it. Gonna love you and leave you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.